without fear continue in the city by the bay. All this and more in the pages of Daredevil number two. Let's jump in. As the comic opens, we can plainly see San Francisco has warmed up to the idea of its newest horned head hero very quickly. And as you know, it's kind of hard for Matt Murdock to hide his identity these days. So, you know, the common man does love the idea of a guy who's able to defend justice on two fronts, in the courtroom by day and on the streets by night. As a matter of fact, it seems the only person who's not happy is the Shroud, a.k.a. Maximilian Coolridge, a lesser-known Marvel hero who is currently calling San Francisco home, as well as raging a brutal war on crime. Stop me if you've heard this one before, but the Shroud became a hero after witnessing his parents shot to death in an alley, which compelled him to train in martial arts at a Nepal monastery. Yeah, he's basically Batman by way of the shadow, the twist being that to have his powers, he had to lose his eyes as well. The mayor joins Daredevil and his newest partner for dinner, where she breaks the news that one of his old baddies, Leland Owlsley, aka The Owl, is thinking about setting up shop in the city. Matt laughs it off, not being afraid of the silly bird man in the slightest. However, when the Shroud appears with the offer to lead Daredevil to the Owl, he accepts, hoping to nick this problem in the bud before anything can become of it. But, of course, because this is comics, our hero ends up walking into a trap. Oh, you mean the guy cloaked in black and called the Shroud wasn't trustworthy after all? Well, I never, as the comic ends. Daredevil number two is another solid Daredevil tale. I like how quickly the new city has taken to having Daredevil around, and the promise of a showdown with a classic baddie has me super excited. Then, of course, there is the continued mystery of what happened to Foggy Nelson. All great stuff, 8.5 out of 10.